The Formbolt Raptor 2 is a fairly unsafe printer. If used for a long period of time, it could cause a fire. So today I'm going to disassemble my Formbolt Raptor 2.0 and show you some of the key areas of safety where they messed up a little bit. And hopefully that will give you some key insights into where you can check your own machines to see if you can improve safety on your machine. Let's get into that whole disassembly process and I'll talk you through some of the key aspects which you might want to look out for. The first thing to look out for is that many of these wires have no cable management implemented at all. So for static wires, they should be latched onto something that also doesn't move. And for moving wires, make sure that they're constrained such that their movement doesn't result in continuous bending at a single point in that wire. Rather, it's maintained gradually over the whole wire in a smoother curve as possible. I'm going to keep the screws for now just in case they're useful later on in the rebuild. Secondly, you might notice that I'm pulling some of these connectors from the wire instead of the connector. That's pretty bad practice and can damage the wire. But when the design doesn't allow space for a human hand, it can be quite difficult to remove some of these connectors. In reality, what you should really do is use a plastic pry tool or something like that so you can make sure you're always pulling from the connector and not from the wire. Terminal blocks like this one that clamp wires should clamp either to bare wires or to bootlace ferrule. These larger screw based terminals should use loop or fork connectors. The crimped wires on the mains bolt fitting just basically came off as soon as I started pulling on them. So that was pretty bad. Crimp connectors should hold both a good electrical and mechanical connection. So the electrical connection, typically obviously to the inner core, and that's a little bit further up the crimp, while at the base of the crimp, it should cover around the sleeve of the wire to ensure a good mechanical hold on the rest of the cable. If you're doing the crimping yourself, do a couple of tests to make sure that the crimp tool or method that you're using is suitable for what you're trying to do. There are brackets here that actually hold this power supply on, but mine are broken. If you do design brackets to hold on any mechanical or electrical components, make sure that they're strong enough to hold what they're trying to hold. You'd think this would be obvious, but according to the designers of this machine, it's not. So I thought I'd mention it. So next is the wire cover, and there are standards here for safety reasons. So in the UK, for our mains plug, which we plug into the wall and many electrical devices, we have three wires, a blue, a brown, and a green and yellow. The blue is the neutral wire, the brown is the live wire, and the green and yellow is the earth. It's also very typical for DC power supply to use red as the positive voltage and black for the ground. Unfortunately, the cables that have been used on this are not. If you take a look, closer look at the wires here on the form box, you can see that brown and blue are being used for the uh, plus 24 volts and ground, whereas the black and red are being used for the 230 volts mains AC. That's really not very good. I think I'm going to keep this power supply. It's a pretty decent unit.
The cable going to the extruder carriage is also another major red flag. It's not really at all the right thing for the job, it's just there are probably 50 points I can make on this, but suffice to say right now, it's just not the right thing to use. The extruder and hot end aren't particularly unsafe, but they are clones, they're not very good quality, and the print quality that you get from them is pretty bad. I've heard. I've not tested this myself, but I can see from looking at them that they're clones and the extruder design is just not particularly optimal. I'm going to tear it down quickly just so I can get the BL touch and filament sensor out and then I think I'll just leave the rest. bed itself is not unsafe but the drag chain certainly is. Because the implementation is incorrect the original wire has been work hardened and as it gets harder it can't flex because it can't flex it broke because it broke the resistance increases because the resistance increases there was lots of heat you can see there's lots of kind of burning and charring around the connection it's all frayed as it's been rubbed against in the drag chain the sheath on the outside has just totally been ripped apart which basically highlights a number of errors in the specification of the not only the drag chain but the cable that's in it it's just totally not suitable for this application while I've said the rest of the bed is kind of okay it's not perfect for me I quite like a flexible build plate system because I find this so much easier for moving prints so while I would like to really salvage parts of this bed because there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the components they're all just bonded together which in itself is not an ideal process and as a result I can't really use most of it now because adding a flexible plate to what's there would not really be a very optimal solution so we're going to unfortunately be getting rid of a lot of that and replacing the whole lot with a new bed system. So that's pretty much it for the disassembly. There are a couple of cables here and there which I do still need to remove and will be working on, but for now that's going to be it. During the disassembly process I've noticed there is quite a lot of damage to the x-axis assembly so like the wheels and carriage stuff so I'm going to go and take a look at that now and see what we can do about repairing it and I'll show you all of that in the next episode. For now thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.